Hi! Kamusta mga kasining at mga nagmamahal sa sining? Um, so, I would like to share the finishing touches of this very old uh, archive watercolor painting. Uh, 2016 ko pa ito ginawa and I just uh, uncovered it from my <laughs> box. So, I used watercolor. Uh, that's Montmart watercolor actually and matagal ko siyang itinabi so hindi ko na i-record yung from the very beginning yung nagawa ko I wasn't able to you know have that recording so ngayon ni-record ko kung paano ko siya ulit i-glaze and the detailing up to the end so stay tuned there will be a short tutorial on how I do all this uh, finishing touches uh, of this uh, rainbow rose flower so manot kayo just click on subscribe button before we forget para updated kayo sa mga susunod kong video so I just want to show to you how I revive yung mga old uh, paintings ko na still it looks like new dahil naitago ko talaga ito well protected and Sa ngayon, gusto ko siyang tapusin. Marami pa akong mga naitabing mga uh, watercolor paintings, uh, charcoal paintings, pencil, and everything na hindi ko natatapos. So, it's like, you know, um, medyo, hindi, hindi ko masasabing art block, but it's kind of, you know, priorities. So, maraming bagay na pinaprioritize ko. Hindi lang itong art. Kasi, uh, it's really time consuming. <laughs> so it's because of what's happening sa ngayon. I just thought of uncovering, unboxing those archive works that I had. And to be honest with you, last year lang talaga ako nagiging uh, focus ulit sa pagpipaint at sa, pag, sa pagdo-drawing. So for the past, like almost mga <laughs> two decades, very, very once in a blue moon lang talaga ako nagpipaint or nagpo-portrait. So, I have a lot of unfinished pieces na hindi ko talaga uh, natatapos pa. However, I just thought of, you know, finishing everything. <laughs> In-embrace ko na ulit yung art after all the years na nagiging dormant ako sa pagpipinta. It's like, you know, hindi talaga ako nagpa-practice a lot. But I'm thankful na nandun pa rin yung, alam mo, yung pulso <laughs> na nakakagawa pa ako ng ganitong bagay kahit sa sobrang tagal ko na hindi pa na talaga nakaka-practice na mayo. So, what I have right now are my art materials na medyo may edad na rin. It's like, you know, some of my watercolors are like, you know, mga 50 years na yung, yung mga pencils ko it's almost mga 17 to 18 years na din high school pa ko yung iba but still, yung iba halos looking brand new pa rin sa sobrang tago ko lang siya <laughs> so, well mahabang kwento why I did not really embrace this kind of creative endeavor you know, for the whole time na ito talaga yung bumuhay sa akin since I was, you know, in grade school. And there are a lot of reasons why. And I have a huge reason why I'm coming back to embracing this creativity again. So, let me share it with you. Anyway, so, talking about life and art, and that's me. <laughs> so, as you can see, hindi ko na rin masyadong i-explain yung process kasi... Well, if you are really into arts, kung talagang artistic kayo, well, the way you see it will explain a lot. Observation would really teach you a lot of things. So, if there are questions and specific uh, maybe queries na gusto nyo malaman, you know, you can just comment down below and then let me know what you think of this and probably... I can reach out to those people na nahihiya. Please, don't be shy. Ask questions. 
why, what, how, whatever, bakit ngayon lang ako bumalik sa art? At bakit ngayon lang ako nag-expose ng sarili ko online sa social media? Okay, so I'll be very honest with you. You know, any question, <laughs> I will answer. I will try to answer it. Sasagutin ko lahat. Hmm, hindi lang yung masyadong personal na mga tanong. Okay, so now, I'm doing this voiceover para naman at least you can get to know me and get to know my art. <laughs> Mahirap kasi na, ewan ko, parang uh, you just look at, you know, what I do and then you don't really know me. So, it's good maybe to share a story of my life, why I'm doing this and what's the purpose, why I'm sharing this. Okay, so go ahead, ask questions, comment down below, share, and learn from what I'm doing here. Okay, so, sasabihin ko na talagang isa sa pinakamahirap na medium yung watercolor. So, dito, ang ginawa ko is, uh, I use yung canvas paper. So, guess prime siya. Gusto siyang gamitin for watercolor. Uh, well, in fact, it's good for acrylic or oil painting or, you know, sometimes I also use gouache on this kind of canvas paper. Pero I just thought of trying it with watercolors. So, it's good to experiment, you know. And I love the texture. Hindi siya masyadong absorbent, yet it works well. And as you can see, I just play along. Art has no rules for me, really. So you can do anything, you can explore anything creatively. So basically, I don't set specific rules when it comes to, you know, drawing or painting. Well, there are certain factors na sinusunod ko, yung very, very um, specific na mga steps kung paano ko nagagawa yung isang bagay. Like this one, I'm using uh, the old, medyo tuyo na siya, uh, Montmartre Chinese White. I mix it with uh, yellow, yung ano tawag dito? Yung lemon yellow ng Montmartre. So, this is also a four-year-old year set of watercolor from Montmartre. So, nabili ko siya pa ng 2016. Just imagine that. So, yung iba natutuyo na because I shared it with my daughter. So, I don't really use pure white on my paintings, on my watercolor paintings. Same thing with black. I mix it with some tinge of uh, use or whatever effect that I want. Kasi there's something off kung pure white ang gagamitin ko for the highlights and if pure black naman ang gagamitin ko sa shadow. There must be a value, a character of another color, of another you, and it will make, you know, the piece, the art piece dramatic and it will pop up, you know? Color has a story to tell. So here, there's a reference that I use, pero hindi ko siya masyadong kinokopya in detail. So this one, I started it with freehand sketch, actually. So when I do the freehand sketching, I just follow the shapes. And then later on, I do glazing, then and as you can see, that's the base color that I'm working on. Tina top up ko siya with the finishing color. So, yan, pure mixture of the pigment with a little combination of some other colors. So, mini mix mix ko siya at mini blend ko siya. So, what I'm using also is uh, a combination of synthetic brushes and you know, yung medyo refined, like the Winsor & Newton uh, watercolor brush. And there are different characteristics when we are using different kind of brushes. You know, the watercolor sable brush is good because it's very absorbent. It could actually, you know, blend the water and the pigment very well. <laughs> and with regards to detailing, ang pinakamaganda namang gamitin for me is the synthetic brushes. So, ayan. So, this one is a synthetic brush that I'm using. 
and as you can see I work on you know moist brush on top of the dried uh, pigment that I have applied already so I don't work on wet on wet it's a different technique so on details it should be moist on dry so what I mean to say is yung brush hindi siya dapat masyadong uh, basa or hindi din masyadong toyo it should be moist so uh, dinidip ko siya some water mix it with color and then I run it through the tissue paper so na absorb ng tissue paper yung excess water and when uh, I can see that the colors still visible then I use that to glaze or rather you know apply the texture of my surface on the tailing especially on the tailing and dyan ko nakukuha yung impression ng realism so hindi ako masyadong technical when it comes to realism mas gusto ko siyang yeah it looks real but more on medyo impression na lang i don't do the um, like the pixel by pixel or you know the square by square or <laughs> what you call that the graph uh the grid or sometimes sometimes i do that pero with this one i just want to be free i want to enjoy you know doing the texturing the blending of the color and i'm trying to make it look as real as possible <laughs> without losing the time of uh, you know copying all those so I always try to think that well I am not a printer I don't do a lot of uh, copying so I am an artist that's what I put into my mind so gusto ko siyang it will look for real talaga na flower siya with all those dude with all those you know mist na nandun sa petals niya but I don't force myself too hard to really copy every detail as you can see so I hope you say <laughs> abangan yung yung pinaka last part itong video because I have a short tutorial on this one in a very very quick tutorial so stay tuned and well you know, let's just talk about this rainbow rose why it has this bright hues and all the uniqueness that you see on it you know why the petals are of different colors well naturally it's not grown that way okay so ang ginagawa nila what they do is they cut the flowers uh, like you know the other kind of flowers the, the chrysanthemums or the hydrangeas or even the orchids and all these flowers um, they can also turn it into a rainbow petal uh, it could make the petals in different colors because they have a way of doing that and uh, it's kind of uh, amazing it fascinates me actually how people uh, create something from nature how, how they put all these colors into something that's natural like this flower and uh, well they don't grow it as it is as you can see we can't grow natural rainbow roses not just yet <laughs> so it's not true when you come across people saying that you can grow rainbow roses well it's kind of uh, natural really believe me so let's talk about this rainbow rose why it is fascinating for me it actually symbolizes a kind of uh, feeling you know a blissful kind of feeling because of the different colors that you can see in the vibrant petals with all those multicolored uh, petals that you can see on a rainbow rose it simply means happiness bliss so each kind of rose actually has its own very unique meaning so halimbawa lang the red would symbolize love and romance and yung light pink naman it will express affection and a kind of admiration 
and then white conveys purity or sympathy so i kind of study all this kind of uh, symbolism so flowers because before i remember people would give me well <laughs> admirers would give me like yellow flowers white flowers red uh different colors of flowers and all that <laughs> so it's kind of fascinating <laughs> really so nobody has given me this artificially uh, colored petals of the rainbow rose not yet so it really fascinates me i receive different kinds of uh, flowers before colored flowers wild flowers <laughs> it was amazing but uh, well nobody yet has given me this kind of rose <laughs> so that's why it's fascinating for me so as you can see now I'm working on the dewdrops you know the mist so uh, it's kind of ridiculous but it's so much fun to do this kind of thing on the petals and I did not really copy every every dot every uh, do that I have on the reference <laughs> So ang ginawa ko lang is just, you know, to get the impression. Uh, yes, uh, yes, it's kind of realistic to see. For me, it's good enough, realistic. But hindi naman talaga siya photocopied. Hindi siya talagang kopyang-kopya. Not perfectly copied. But I'm happy with the result. So, at the end of the video, makikita niyo, I will show how I did this thing. How I put up all these, you know, droplets of dews, you know. The end of the video so please stay tuned <laughs> nawawala na ako na sasabihin anyway so what what flowers do you like to draw because mostly i would see roses why why do people uh or artists rather like to draw roses you know bakit siya naging popular why roses are very popular to paint so <laughs> nakakatawa siya diba well siguro maraming there are a lot of answers and just to tell you you know the rarest kind of rose or the the most uh, natural at pinaka rare sa lahat ng mga roses is actually the blue roses so ito naman sa totoo lang there's no natural thing na nag-grow ng natural colored blue roses <laughs> there are blue roses though but mostly when you see those blue roses in the market they are dyed or cultivated through a kind of genetic modification so yan yung uh, mabibili natin sa mga florists so lahat ng mga rare kind of uh, uh, colored roses trust me they are not naturally grown they are actually genetically modified so you see lahat ng mga bagay ngayon pwede nang gawa ng paraan through science nakakatawa it's it's kind of fascinating nakakamangha diba but well let's see how this rose this rainbow rose is going to turn out so medyo nirush ko na medyo tinimelapse ko na <laughs> and i can't wait to share to you how i work on some little techniques it's not that big deal pero gusto ko lang i-share din sa inyo so gusto mat matutunan okay kung paano ito ginawa at paano ko ito ginawa yung especially yung focus ko dito is you know the droplets of water the the dew or yung mist dito sa mga petals na ito so i'm really looking forward to create more of this uh, different flowers rose is one of my favorite flowers next are the orchids and the wildflowers <laughs> i'll be doing a lot of this next time so here i'm gonna show to you what i use just to top up the colors on this montmart old montmart i combined it with prang actually and 
it's a combination of Montmartre and Prang watercolor. So I use three brushes. One is uh, is a, a sable brush from Winsor and Newton, and two are actually this one. Okay, synthetic brushes, and well. I use tissue paper. I recycle those uh, tissues that I get from restaurants and cafes. So let's use prong watercolor. And as you can see there, the rose that I started, it was actually done in Montmartre. So I don't want to squeeze more of the Montmartre tubes. I'd rather use prong for now. So it's quite challenging to work on this. So I'm blending and I'm showing you the... Uh, way I do okay that kind of uh, blending and uh, as you can see okay from the yellow to the red I'm just using the basic colors uh, that is say the kind of uh, gradient application that I do here so I'm using this kind of brush it's a synthetic brush with a tube that you can put water in it. Okay, it's also an old brush, so medyo matagal na din yan, last, last year pa yan. And then now, I think, uh, hindi talaga nakuha nung video yung tunay na kulay. It's kind of off. But then this one is blue. And so, that's the natural colors, the natural pigment col of uh, the colors that I use. So usually when I do the yellow glazing, I don't use black. So I mix brown and a bit of yellow on it. So yan yung ginagamit ko for the glazing, for the, you know, the bottom layer, the, 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 the basic layer of it. Kung kailangan na may merong gradation or kailangan kong maglagay ng shadow. So with red, I use also a combination of uh, brown and a little blue. So it looks black, but then I don't really use true black, yung talagang black na color. I, I tend to use different colors to make my own black. And the same thing with blue. It looks black. My glaze you know, looks black, pero hindi talaga yun siya black na color. It's a combination of brown, and there's a tint, or rather a tint of blue on it. So, now let's apply, since it's dry now, let's apply the yellow, the pure yellow pigment on top of it. So, kapag dry na siya, hindi na siya masyadong nag-run through. So, ganyan ang ginawa ko dun sa mga petals. So, I see to it na dry na dry na yung first layer ng glaze. And then I apply uh, the original pigment, the color that I want on top of it. So, ganyan ang magiging effect niya as you can see. Yeah, so, hindi siya magmimix doon. Hindi siya magbibleed kasi dry na dry na siya. The same thing with red. Okay, so, as you can see, it's red. But, the dried glaze does not bleed with the top layer so you can use uh, your blower or you can just let it dry on air and just make sure na completely dry yung glazing before you apply the next layer the same thing with blue okay so next i'll be showing to you how i work on the different uh, uh, realistic looking Dew drops or water droplets. Okay, so let me just finish on this one. Now it's almost done. Okay, so this kind of paper is not that ideal for watercolor actually, but it, it's a kind of experiment for me also, just to show you how I work on different papers. Now let's start with this dew. Okay, as you can see, it's not really proper for me. Yeah, for me lang, sa akin lang. It's not really proper to use this kind of dark lines like what I'm using right now. Hindi yan ideal. And it would look so off. Okay, kasi kung uunahin yung dark lines, this is what I want to show to you, uh, magiging muddy yung kalalabasan ng water droplets. Even though you try to work on it, but it will still look different. So, this is the no-no thing 
you know, in working on with water droplets, especially if it's silhouette, then you apply that uh, siding, that lining of dark color. So, magiging muddy siya. You see, it doesn't look good. It's not what I want. So, let me work on this and show you the difference. Okay. So, it doesn't really look like the impression of a water droplet. So, this is off. Okay. So, you see, the more that you apply the darker lining and shadow, even though you can lift it up, you know, with the uh, brush when it's still wet, hindi din siya talaga uh, good looking. It's not that realistic. So this is one mistake that we should avoid in working with, you know, the realistic looking water droplets. So I'm trying to work it out and still pushing it to look more realistic, okay? But still it's off. Hindi ganyan talaga, okay? So, I don't know how other people do that, but the first thing that I'm showing you here is not what it should be or it's not the way how I do it actually. So, may nakita lang ako kasi na parang ganito. They did the first uh, uh, black lining and the sidings and then it's kind of off. Now, let's work on this glazed yellow. Okay, so I'm using titanium white and this is Montmartre. Mm. Prong white is kind of muddy. It doesn't really show that it is white so I don't use it it's good to combine different watercolors so as you can see since I use titanium white first and then the original lemon yellow it pops up this is how I use it as you can see in the past or in the earlier video how I did those uh, water droplets okay so it kind of Work on it slowly, see to it that it's dry. Then, lighter shade lang muna, okay, on the sidings. You see it still bleed, it still bleeds, I mean, but we can work on it, okay. Uh, we don't need a very wet bristle. We have to see to it na medyo moist lang yung bristle niya, okay. Then let's apply that kind of thing na magpapop up siya, yung parang uh, ano yan, yung nahihit ng light. So uh, it will look more like a dew drop or a water droplet. See? So going back to that one on top, which is really off, so you can see the difference, right? So, well, as I said, there's no specific rules, you know, to follow how you do your art how you can be creative it's all about self-discovery so this is my own discovery now let's try another here on the red <laughs> uh, color so still the same it's just a different shade you see how it pops up okay so i don't use black as the shadow but rather I just used red so this is just white and red then I darken it a bit more with the pigment of the red no other color combination no no glazing just red and white still it looks more like a water droplet so this one with our glazed red okay let's use more white on this one not, not that really thick hindi masyadong makapal na white and let's try a different shape okay so as you can see i'm working on the side you, you just have to determine where the light is coming from so you can work on the other way around and then i uh, just play along just imagine it i don't copy i just use pure imagination for this one okay so work on it you know, an artist should have a kind of photographic eyes. <laughs> okay. And that's what, you know, the old artist of history did a long time ago. They just have a photographic eye. 
they do a lot of studies and that's how they came up with all those paintings so as you can see I still use more of the red no glazing just white and red see how it pops up okay we have two more to go okay you think that's okay can you work on that <laughs> It's so much fun to work on these little things, you know, the water droplets and all that. Okay, let's put a little bit of uh, shadow. Okay, let's make it pop up. Okay, just a bit. Not too dark. So it's not black again, it's a combination of blue and brown. Okay, now let's work on the blue this is actually the turquoise blue but it's showing kind of different colors here on the video <laughs> not uh, the real color that i'm using okay so again let's work on some reflective uh, uh, kind of uh, droplet here tingnan natin okay different shape let's see how it will come up okay uh kumbaga it is going to reflect something it will show some kind of uh, varied reflection parang ganun let's see let's work on the blending so it's just pure blue and white Okay, I'm into my domain shadow. That's okay. Okay, so let's work on it. Okay. So, kung saan ang kagaling yung light mo doon din yung reflection, and the shadow should be on the opposite side of that reflection. So. It's how the dark and the light play on the on this kind of thing, you no, know, on whatever piece that you're working on. It's all about how the sinking of the light and the dark. It's still wet. Let me just go back to it after a while. Let's work on this one. So I'm using more of the white steel. It's uh, the Montmartre titanium white. Okay. And then let's put some combination of um, the blue and a little bit of brown. Okay. This is going to be different. Okay, let's go back to this one. Okay, a bit more. Then let's show some kind of reflection there. Okay. let's see what's gonna happen so along the way that you practice working on this one you will discover a lot of things really you can get you know the real water and drop it on a different uh, colored surface uh, you can practice working from the real thing okay now let's work on this one. Medyo basa pa yung nasa taas. Let's go back to it again after a while. So let's make this more reflective of something. A water droplet should not be that perfect. <laughs> this shape should be kind of, uh, you know, imperfect. It could be perfect as you wish <laughs> but that's you know imperfections are kind of creative and I like it 
<laughs> so now it's popping up. Let's finish the detail of this one. I just want to focus on this. So blue on the sides. And we need to add some more here. I hope you're enjoying this. <laughs> it's kind of tedious, but it's gonna be easy. You can do even better. Okay, now it's dry. Let's add some more. Okay, let's make it darker on this side. Okay. It's going to be you know, the darker side from that reflection, the opposite of light, is dark. It's always the thing. The opposite of light is dark. <laughs> the simple formula in working on whatever you have. It's always what you need to remember, you know working in different medium always think that the opposite of light is dark <laughs> okay. make the light pop up with your dark and let your dark rain <laughs> or rather subdue the area with light okay, so it's up to you how you combine this And too much of something is not always good on a drawing or on a painting. There must always be a kind of a, a relativity or a connection, you know, with the different use and values, uh, the, the kind of uh, light and dark that we work on. So it will give a different meaning to the art piece or whatever you're working on okay so there we go which one do you think is more realistic okay here's the challenge work on it do your water droplets now i'm gonna show you how i glaze and did a background Okay, so I don't really use you know tapes and all that <laughs> I, I I kind of conserve things okay so from this since we've finished it let me work on how I did the background of the rose so it's kind of a uh, you know shady and uh, hazy it's not that clear but we have the impression of what we can see at the background okay so this is how I combine colors first I wet the surface so the surface here is still wet and then it's a wet on wet technique so I allow the color I let it run through I let it play and mix and just embrace each other okay. just play with it you know play along with it and wait how it is going to turn out okay. as long as you know the color values then you can expect what's gonna turn out okay you just have to learn how color mix with the one another how color how color mixes and blends it's it's going to be easy and fun working on different uh, color and texture so now it's sweat you see it's so satisfying to just let it run through and wait for it until it dries out it's gonna show you a different thing let's add some more use okay. a 
the most satisfying part of working on the watercolor is the blading and it's like you know the colors running after one another embracing it and turning it into a different kind of color <laughs> that's the fun of it that's the joy with watercolor I kind of like this kind of, uh, you know, technique when I work on the background of anything I do in watercolor. So let's wait until it's dry, as you can see. Well, I'm kind of happy about this one, but look at it when it's dry. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to subscribe and share the good art vibe. So I hope you got something valuable and worth remembering.